All right, YouTube, so this is the second video, part two of a uh, three-part video, how to wire your lightsaber using custom saber shop parts. This was a pain. Uh, I went ahead and did this real quick, soldered everything together just so I could see if everything worked right and so I could show y'all. I wanted to show y'all as bare knuckles as I could without heat shrink on it. Uh, I don't have heat shrink on it right now. This I've just literally soldered this. So what I wanted to show you might be kind of hard to see. I'm not going to be able to touch it very much. Uh, I'm probably wiggling the camera because I'm not using a tripod. But I'm going to try my best here. So initially what I did is I hooked up. Yeah, this is a knife. Uh, I guess I'll use a pencil. How about that? Not as scary. So... Got everything plugged in how I showed you in the first part. Recharge port plugged in to the yellow and black. It helps to have the color, the colored wires. I will say that. Um, if you're a veteran though, you probably aren't watching this video. It probably doesn't matter. But recharge port wired into the red and black of the Nano. Green is plugged in. Speakers plugged into the green. And then this is the only part where you have to do any soldering and anything else. So yellow <clears throat> is plugged in to the switch. That's only the switch function. The yellow is soldered to the prongs on the switch for the switch function. That means when you press it in, activates the saber, but there's no lights. It just gives the noise. So. The yellow is soldered into the prongs for the switch. Okay, then what I did is I got black and red. I wanted to have blue and white, but they didn't have blue and white like I said in another video. So black and red is what I used. But still, black is negative, red's positive like normal. Over here, blue is negative because it goes to black, and red is positive. So that tells you that blue is negative for the... LED and white is positive. So back to this. On this switch, like I said in the other video, there's a little bitty symbol underneath the switch. It says positive and negative. It's right next to the prongs. So black goes to the negative prong, red goes to the positive prong. Then you come down and we'll stop right there for a second. So on the LED, I plugged in female blue and white to the LED to give me some extra length. Okay, so blue is soldered in to the negative. And then on this white one, I have it coming down and there's a resistor right here. Like I said in the other video, the resistor is right there on the white wire. So the flow is coming and it hits that resistor and then goes to the LED. Flow is coming, hits this resistor right here, and goes to the switch. This resistor is soldered into the red. Positive resistor ties into the white. Okay. White over here, resistor ties in, goes down. And this is, like I said, um, wanted to have blue and white, couldn't. So this is a male red and black. JST wires. What I did is these red and black right here used to be attached to this red and black. I cut them and tied all this together. I had to have extra wire for that. There's my other wire over there. I don't actually know if I need that. Um, but it doesn't hurt to have extra and extra JSTs. So in the previous video, I told you exactly what to order. You might as well order all this. That way you have extra wire, extra JSTs. So like I said, they tie in resistor and then ties into white, black ties into blue, goes down, blue's tying in to black because remember blue's negative, and then white is tying into red right here, red's positive, okay? And this JST is the blue and white on the Nano. So blue and white goes into the Nano, it's female, connects to the male of these. Okay. I hope that kind of explained to you how this is tied in. 
Um, if you don't understand why or anything, it doesn't matter. Just do it like this and look at the, you can pause this video right here, literally, and solder everything together how I have it, okay? The biggest thing is the switch. If you really don't understand um, how to do any of this like I didn't originally, just remember what I said, rewind the video. It's self-explanatory, the little positive and negative emblem on here on the prongs. The positive and negative for the prongs is for the light. So you're soldering these red and black on the positive and negative so that the light on this switch comes on. It's this is a resistor for that light. And this is the resistor for this light, this LED module. So that's what that's for. Um, I'll zoom in a little bit on these solders. They're not the best. I just did this quick so that I could get some flow and so I could see if it worked. So, there's my solders. There's one, two, one right there, three, four, five, and then all these solder joints. And then this one, six, seven, um, and that's, I guess that's it. Anyway. So I'm going to try to turn this on without breaking my solder joints um, and then I'm going to get heat shrink later, shrink all this together, make it secure, and then the next video I'll put it all in my saber, the one I made myself, and show you exactly how it goes. So, Alright, so I decided to cut that last video short uh, and redo this part because when I went to turn my saber on, uh, I had some mix-ups and it turns out I forgot to pull the, pill, the kill plug. And um, I just ended up looking stupid. So here we go. Uh, I went ahead and um, between that video you were just watching and this one, I went ahead and heat shrunk everything together, uh, made it secure. And so now I can actually show you how it works coming on. So let me put this down for one second. All right, I'm putting the battery on right now. Okay, so I just had to plug in the battery. All right, so now I'm gonna pull the kill plug. And you heard the boot up noise. Next, I'm gonna hit the switch. There's the LED on the switch. And it actually does uh, energy fluctuations with the LED. And you can hear the noise as it moves. It all comes from the Nano. Um, so there you go. It's got the clashing noise. It's got the fluctuations. Uh, LED here. Like I said before, I'll get a more premium speaker probably. I'm not 100%. I feel like there's better ones out there. So I'll put the kill plug back in after I turn this off. All right. So to sum up this video, uh, it's getting kind of lengthy. So to sum it up, it's super easy if you can just sit down, think about it, write this stuff out, make a map, um, get you an inventory list, watch this video as many times as you need to, and it'll begin to make sense to you. It looks confusing because it's just a bunch of wires, but if you can just lay it out, look at the, the video and pause it, um, it'll start to make sense and you can kind of figure out how this goes because I'm a beginner also. Um, the soldering was a pain. So just a little advice. I'm not a professional solder. It's my first time soldering. Um, so I know some people are probably going to comment and say, oh, that's a horrible way to solder. You don't know what you're doing. Well, you're right. So what I did, though, is um, I started off trying to solder the wires together just like let me get a piece here. I started off just trying to solder kind of straight like that and join them together. Well, that kept breaking on me. So I just said, forget it. Um, I'm going to twist the wires together so it will hold. And then I can get um, my solder on there good and clean, make it secure. And then I can heat shrink it. So that's what I did. You can kind of see right here. Um, it looks awful. Okay, so you are going to comment, I'm sure, but... Uh, it looks awful, but I twisted them together and then I lay some solder on it and then I try to smooth it over with the solder iron. 
um, to make it secure. And these aren't going anywhere. I can't put heat shrink on these unless somebody knows a trick because there's a T um, joint so or a Y splice, whatever. So I don't know how to heat shrink that. So I'll probably just keep it like that and be careful. Um, I heat shrunk everything else though, as you can see, and I tried to do it color wise. So uh, that's all I got for this video, I believe. Um, besides, well, I did want to show you this before I get to the next video. This is my homemade saver. Okay, this is uh, basically drain pipe is what this is. And I took pieces off and I cut some stuff out. My idea is the LED will go in here and then the switch will be right here, okay? And then when it comes out, that's kind of like my little holes for extra light. I'll probably put some on you know, the side or something um, so it'll come out the sides. Um, the bottom is gonna either be this or this. I have not decided yet. Um, so this is the original one I made uh, with copper. This was the idea. Um, is kind of how it would look. And then that obviously would have some holes in it and such for decoration and so the speaker can be heard better. Um, so that's one option. Um, and this is the second option. Try to get this on here if I can. This is more, I guess, like the savers you see in the movies and stuff because the bottom is bigger. Um, I think I like this one best because it gives you a spot for your palm, the back of your hand, and it's got a hole right there. So I can, I got a piece of copper that I'm gonna cap over that hole and put some holes in it for design and for the speaker. Um, and the speaker will be at the bottom of this. So it'll go speaker, um, I'll have to figure out where, probably the kill plug with the recharge port somewhere at the bottom because the kill plug I got also serves as a hanger for hanging on your belt upside down. So I'll probably put the kill plug somewhere here at the bottom. And then in the middle, it'll be like battery and wires and the nano. I'm trying to, I'm going to figure out how I'm going to secure that. And then obviously the switch and then the LED will have to be somewhere in, in here. And I'll secure that. I'll make, I'll drill some holes and I'll secure it with some uh, screws on all the sides to hold it in place. I'm not actually going to screw through it, but it'll just kind of squeeze it in there. Um, but I'll explain that in the next video when I have the finished product. So hopefully that doesn't take too long.